Yes. All right. Uh, we, we are a digital marketing agency here in Charlottesville. We're focused really on helping local online businesses. I do have a space theme, which works out well for the May the 4th be with you. And so that, that's something that, uh, that I really am also honored to be able to be presenting today. Our vision, uh, we really are, are wanting to help local businesses. We want to empower every business owner to best understand, manage, and benefit from their online presence. So that's something that I've been working to help local businesses with for, for over a decade now. And uh, just within, uh, we started Gig Strategic just over a year ago. So we're in our second year as, a, as an agency. Here are some of the clients we work with. And it's just to, to give you an idea of the variety of people we work with, because the topic today that we're talking about is website content and landing pages, how to improve the quality for SEO and SEM. And I wanted to, to share the, the variety of clients because it, it really doesn't matter what your business is. Uh, we can help, uh, you know, doing this well will help any business out there. Having good content, high quality content, but thinking about our content in a way that will maximize your uh, visibility within SEO and SEM is what we're trying to accomplish today. So I'm gonna give you some really good tips and, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll have some great uh, actionable items you can take home with you or take to your business with you to get started with. It's gonna help you overall with your ranking for SEO and some of your quality score for SEM. So I do wanna start with what these things are. We throw around these these terms in the digital marketing world a lot and and uh, I don't like to just assume that we all know what they are or what they mean so with SEO what is SEO this is search engine optimization both of these things that we're talking about today have to do with search engines and as you know uh, one of the biggest search engines out there is Google so Google now is pretty um, ubiquitous as far as our everyday lives. We interact with many different Google products, but Google started out as a search engine. It took different websites and crawled all these websites and indexed those websites and then ranked those websites so that when people are searching for content on the internet, they can find those websites easily. They can find that content easily. So the way it works, as I mentioned, a site is crawled, you know, your website by these different robots or spiders, they can index your website to show and, and, and rank on these various search engines such as Google, Yahoo, Bing, there are lots and lots and lots of search engines, but those are the main ones out there. And there are a couple main considerations we think about within SEO, and I mention these because I think they're relative, uh, they're relative, they're relevant, sorry, they're relevant for what we're talking about today, when we're thinking about content for our website, like content that we're creating for either a blog post or a landing page, things that we may wanna take into consideration within SEO are some of the on-site technical pieces that we're gonna look at. And then there are also off-site factors, which are uh, the quality of backlinks, the number of backlinks that are maybe pointing, that are pointing to my website. So that's SEO in a nutshell, practice of improving my website ranking. It's called natural or organic search, rank, search ranking for searchable content on search engines. So what is SEM? And this one's kind of thrown around in different ways. So search engine marketing. So this is where we're actually marketing. Search engine optimization. We're just trying to rank higher. Search engine marketing. We're actually going to be paying for those spots. Um, I didn't mention on that first slide here, I did a search local paid search strategy in Charlottesville and you see there's a paid search ad at the top. And then underneath that, I was happy to see my, my and I, part of why I picked that search term is because my, my, my business showed up right in the top organic listing. But that's an example of that organic listing underneath the paid search ad. So SEM is search engine marketing, it's the purchase. It's where we're actually buying that placement on the search engines. It's also called pay-per-click. Uh, has a couple other different uh, uh, nomenclatures, but we basically are trying to drive traffic to a website by bidding on keywords and serving text ads across different devices as, as people are searching on their mobile device or online or, you know, nowadays through Alexa or whatever we may be using to search uh, for content. Some of the main considerations here for performance with paid search or search engine marketing is 
looking at the keywords, the bids, the targeting, ad type, copy, extensions, landing pages, conversions. There's many different aspects to how we may manage uh, paid search. Uh, and this is important too, when we get to looking at the content of our website. So now that we know what SEO and SEM is, let's talk about content, okay? I saw this on Gary Vaynerchuk's, uh, I think it was on LinkedIn, maybe he had this, this uh, cartoon. And so I'm trying to give him credit. I didn't have, uh, uh, there was no credit on this, but it's tough to grow anything without water, right? This guy's trying to, to grow a plant and water, what is water? It's our content. The content that we have on our website is what is the water that will help our traffic grow. And that's what we all want, right? We want more and more people to know who we are and come to our websites. And hopefully we want them to be people that are like high quality traffic as well. So determining what content to write about. And I am not technically a copywriter. Uh, copywriting is important. It's good to have good copy and it's good to, to have good content. So content creation, um, I do write blog posts. I have written for dossiers in the past for my old agency, Rim Kaufman Group, RKG, now Merkel. And so I've, I've done some writing. Uh, it's definitely not my area of expertise, but there are lots of resources online to find like a good way to, to, to write well. So this isn't really as much about writing well as much as I would like to talk about um, what to write about and how to organize that content for a website page or a post. And one of the first things is we want to think like our customers. Uh, so how are people searching for us? This is where our content would be relevant to what our uh, customers, our prospects may be looking uh, for. So we want to write content that's relevant. And, you know, we want to ask our best customers, you know, what resonates with them? How do you find out what is good content? I, I think I would say, ask, you know, your customers, how did you find us? What were you looking for when you found us? Do your own customer research. Um, you know, getting a good understanding of your customers is important. It's an important process here. And it can be expensive to really spend a lot of time in, the, in paying for somebody to do this kind of research. But there are ways that we can do it. And number one, I think, is just ask them. You know, survey your customers. What are you searching for? What kind of content could I produce that would be helpful for you? Think about your brand. What are the promises that you're making? We're doing a series right now, a Lunchbox series. Um, and we've posted some things through, uh, we partnered with an agency in Richmond that helps a lot with branding. Their name is Wabash and Lake. And uh, we've posted through our YouTube channel and you can find that, that content. But he talked a lot about who is my brand? What is the promise I'm making as a brand? The better I understand my brand is it's gonna help me with the voice and how I write content for my website. That's gonna resonate hopefully with my, my customers. Um, another thing super important in determining what content to write about is that it needs to be focused content. Uh, and this is where I struggle a lot. Uh, I want to write about like 15 different things, but for thinking about how this works for SEO and SEM, one topic per page, like one complete thought per page is going to be very helpful for helping me to index well on SEO and have a high quality score for SEM. So having that one topic per page or per post is going to be really important for focusing my content. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, but then organizing my site. I want to make sure that people can find the content easily on my website. So writing the content is part of it. But then how do I make that content? If I'm a user and I land on your homepage, how do I find that content on your, your website? So that's where menus, our, our top level navigation, maybe that, that, that top level menu that we have on the website, uh, that, that could be helpful uh, to what, what topics should I include, what categories, and then if there are drop downs, what subcategories there, and then internal linking. So that's 
internal linking or, or like a word that I may have on my homepage. For example, on Gig Strategic, I list a bunch of our products and services. So as I'm building out my website, and this is a work in progress for me as well, I, I don't have it completely built out. Uh, I'm always trying to water it through building better content. I only last week added a page for search engine optimization, which is one of the big things we help businesses with. I hadn't built content about that. But on my homepage now, when I talk about search engine optimization, I have a hyperlink to that content that I built, to that page about search engine optimization. So that's an internal link. So as we're building out content on our page, how are users going to navigate to find it? And some of those internal links are ways that we can also give signals to the robots out there as to what the content is that we're um, that we're talking about. So for me, search engine optimization are the words. I hyperlink that to a page about search engine optimization. Those are all things that give these robots clues as to what keywords we're talking about. Search engine optimization that I hope to rank for. Right. Um, so moving on to this next point of writing well. Again, I, this one I can't help you as much with. That's a whole nother seminar with somebody that can probably talk about this a lot better than I can. But, you know, we want to think about it. Is it interesting? Is it engaging? Uh, does it make me want to keep reading or do I just, is it too long, didn't read, didn't capture my interest and I move on so I bounce? Um, and then does it answer the question or meet the need? Does it really give me, is there value here, right? Is the content just content for content's sake? Or does it reflect my brand and answer a question and provide a solution for what that user is looking for, right? Does it answer the question, meet the need? Um, and then some other things for how we look at content is through the lens of technical tools that we can take advantage of, okay? And I'm gonna go into each of these in a little more detail, but uh, analytics, uh, search console, Google's uh, search console, gives us some information about our page traffic. How long is somebody spending on a certain page? So if I have a page that I spend a lot of time writing a, a great content piece, I think it's awesome. People come and they spend three seconds on that page. Maybe they're not reading it all. And I need to ask myself, well, why aren't they reading it? You know, maybe I need to write better. Maybe I need to do some things with images or some other things that I can uh, tell the story in a better way that will keep their engagement, right? Um, so there are some other things within a, a, a service called Yoast that I'm going to share, share a little bit about. And then just some of the tagging, like I mentioned already with that hyperlink and internal linking, that's one signal for robots. So um, I, as we go to the next slide here, I think it's... Um, I, I want to do a time check. Anne Marie, what's my time? Let me see here. Been about eight minutes. It feels like 30, but uh, we're, I, I want to get through this. And, and when we did these in person, Elizabeth was always, she had that, um, you know, she had a timer, like uh, the, the uh, hourglass and it was 15 minutes. And, and she was like, made me stick to that 15 minutes. So um, we'll try to be uh, sensitive to time, but I do think we'll be able to get through this. And I want to leave some time for Q&A as well. So if anybody has questions as we're going through this, please write them down, take notes, and we'll uh, do my best. I'll do my best to answer those at the end. Oh, so thinking like your customer. Okay. That's what I talked about here. Next, I'm going to think, talk about thinking like a robot. But I love this picture here. I love this analogy. I came up with this a little, like, uh, uh, like maybe a year ago about what, you know, what is, how do I describe SEO to somebody? Um, building focused content based on a potential customer's needs. And I've got this picture here on the post I wrote uh, last week that I posted. I, I used a pile of like jewelry and watches and bracelets and watch and uh, rings and, and earrings. I've got all of these tools here, right? I've got all of these keywords that I want my page to rank for. I've got all of these keywords that my users may be searching for, but I need to start taking all of these pieces and turning them into categories and subcategories and start to think about these in ways that um, 
is very organized because that's how robots think, okay? They're, they're pretty organized with the way they look in at my website. So if I'm looking at all of these different jewelry pieces and I said to somebody, if I came into your store right now and you were a jewelry store and you had a big bin in the middle of the store filled with watches and bracelets and earrings, silver, gold, men's, women's, how easy would it be for me to find what I'm looking for? Not very easy, right? It would be hard to find what I'm looking for. So I wanna start thinking about uh, gold watches maybe. Men's gold watch is something I'm looking for. Well then I wanna have a, a page that would have men's gold watches on it and content about that, okay? Uh, maybe we have just watches, right? So I have a, a page that talks about watches and one of the subheaders on it may be men's gold watches and the internal link would then take me to the page about men's gold watches. So you get an idea of how we start to make that content more easy to uh, for the robots, but also for our users to navigate our website to find the information that they're looking for. So when we think about building a page about a, um, that we're trying to rank for a keyword for, say it's men's gold watches, we need to have a page dedicated to men's gold watches. It would be hard to rank for men's gold watches on a page that also talked about women's silver earrings or, um, you know, or uh, in, uh, engraved Jeff Jefferson cups or graduation gifts. If we put all of those things onto a page, it's becoming more and more like that bin that they're trying to shop out of that's full of a bunch of different things, right? So we want to try to have each page be focused and have just one thought or one product or one service that we're trying to rank for, that we're trying to answer the question for, for how our users our customers, potential customers might be searching for us. So thinking like a robot, um, SEO analysis, digital marketing. So you can see my little green smiley face in the top right. Yoast is a plugin that you can get on WordPress. So if you have WordPress website, um, you can add this, the, the Yoast uh, plugin, and it will kind of do a lot of the SEO for you. It can start to crawl your site as if it was a robot, and it'll start to look at these things that you see I have listed on the left-hand side. So it's got outbound links. It's got internal links. <clears throat> the key phrase in the introduction. So what is the key phrase? In this case, it was digital marketing. So my title of my page, I talk about digital marketing in Charlottesville. My header. My H1 tag is going to talk about digital marketing in Charlottesville. Uh, the key phrase density, we want to be like, you know, smart with this. Um, in the old days, people used to stuff a bunch of keywords in like a footer and like pray that Google's algorithm would catch all that and I'd rank well. And Google's algorithm, honestly, the more we try to beat it, the more I think we're going to fail. It's not about beating an algorithm. It's about creating content that is relevant, that is useful for our clients, for our for users that are searching for us. If we do that well, the other pieces will take care of themselves. Having said that, it's still important to know some of these technical things like meta description. Do I have a meta description? If I don't, my website will typically, Google's gonna just grab some meta description and throw it in there automatically. And it may not be optimized. So I want to write out my own meta description <clears throat> for that page. Uh, image alt attributes. Good job it has down here for me. <clears throat> uh, this is where image alt uh, attributes is. When a robot crawls my website, a robot can't tell that I have a picture of um, a bunch of jewelry in the middle of a page, you know, uh, that I've, that I'm, that I've shown it on my SEO page, right? So I have to tell that robot that's crawling it. Well, I tell that robot what this is, is this is an example of optimizing for search engine optimization in Charlottesville, Virginia. And that's my, I can create an alt attribute that nobody sees it. It's in the HTML code, but it's a way that I can label my image so that the robot can understand what it is. Here's a tip. This is important for you, depending on if you're not using WordPress, maybe you're using uh, Squarespace or Wix or some other web builder. Uh, one, one thing that Google will look at is the name of the image. So if we are uploading our images to our websites and it's DSC001379, that doesn't mean anything to a robot, right? But when I name my image, name my image, think about the, 
the keywords in the naming of my image, okay? That's even important. So gold watches in Charlottesville, Virginia. <clears throat> Engagement rank Charlottesville, Virginia. <clears throat> Search engine optimization Charlottesville, Virginia. And I include our location as well in a lot of these as I'm trying to send signals to the robots for like that I'm operating business here in this, in this area. But those, that's another way. That's another thing is naming your images in a way that is SEO friendly. All right. So that's part of thinking like a robot. Here is an example of an old tag and a new tag for my store. So the old tag I just had on here, a title tag, our store, Gig Strategic, right? New optimization tag, I made sure to include that meta name and content. Okay. So the meta description now, Gig Strategic offers a variety of da 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 da. Visit us to know more. So that meta tag is when people search, you see that little snippet of text that comes up on the search engine, that's that meta description. And if we don't tell it, Google will pull in its own or it won't be optimized. But if we can write good content there, that's gonna show up when people are searching, that will be what shows up underneath, which could help us get a better click-through rate, right? Because we want people to click on our link when they see our, our, our link or our, our website on the search engine page, we wanna, um, we want people to click on that. So that's one example of how to optimize the content, but using this technical piece to help make sure that when it's crawled, the robots will know what it is. Here's another one. This is where I gave the example of uh, the title. It's not the best one, but you know, it, 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 before down here, can you see my mouse when I scroll over or do you not see it? My cursor, okay. So all, uh, there's nothing there, right? The alt text. So here, what is Gig Strategic? And there's a title, what is Gig Strategic? So this is where I'm adding in some additional information. So this is where that content piece that's gonna help your SEO by telling that, you know, by adding in those technical pieces, okay? So that when the website is crawled, you know, make sure these things are taken care of. And, you know, I think sometimes we assume that our web developer, They've done a great job. They've built us this website and it's beautiful. And then hopefully it loads really fast and hopefully it's uh, um, got great, uh, you know, all these bells and whistles that we have our fancy new website, but it may not underneath that, they may not be including these different SEO signals that are really important for these technical pieces that help us with ranking for SEO. Now, is it working? And I know I'm running out of time now. I've, I've definitely, so I'll try to wrap this up in the next five minutes. Is it working? So know your numbers. Okay, so I, I'm a data-driven guy. Like I, I believe we need to know our, our numbers. So we have some internal tools that we use at Gig Strategic to monitor keyword performance, to see are we making progress on the different search engines for how they're ranking. You know, so we do some benchmarking and then we see how those are ranking over time. And then we also look at the overall SEO. Is, is my SEO traffic from Google Analytics, is it going up? Um, and then for paid search, I know I haven't talked a lot about SEM. I'm going to in a second now, but we'll see that as, we're, have, as we improve our quality score, our cost per click will go down, which means we can get more traffic to our website for less money, okay? So that's why content is not just important for SEO, but also for SEM, all right? So I'm gonna talk briefly here about the SEM piece because I didn't talk a lot about it. Quality score, when you're bidding on your keywords, your ad coming up at the top of the page, those paid search ads are based on an auction, okay? And you're bidding on those keywords. Well, quality score is one of the factors that can determine how much you're paying for your click and where your click is ranking compared to other people that are bidding on that keyword at the same time. The better our quality score, the higher we will show up and at a lower cost per click. I'll just give you a quick example of this. If you had XYZ Insurance Company, and this is why I wrote an article about bidding on brand. XYZ Insurance Company, if I'm bidding on XYZ Insurance, my text ad, my text copy, my content on my text ad says XYZ Insurance Company, and then the page that I click through says XYZ insurance company, that tells Google lots of things. This is relevant for XYZ insurance company. So I have a very high quality score. So I will pay lower for that cost per click and rank higher compared to other people bidding at the same time. 
Now, if I'm bidding on a competitor, which is not a bad thing to do, we can do that. It's okay. So if I'm b bidding on ABC insurance company and I'm XYZ insurance company, my text ad can't have, a B can't have ABC, but I can bid on that ABC keyword and my landing page isn't going to talk about ABC. It's going to still talk about XYZ. My quality score is going to be lower. I'm going to pay more for that. So I say all that, that brief, very brief discussion about quality score and paid search to, um, to really talk about why also content is important. Landing page experience is one of the ranking, is one of the things that we know, Google tells us, is, is used in calculating the quality score. So if I have a, a text ad that I'm building and I'm bidding on keywords and I say uh, gold men's watches, and that's the keyword I'm bidding on, but the page I take them to is talking about uh, baseball cards, okay? Um, I'm bidding on that keyword because I just want traffic, traffic, traffic to my website. I'm paying a lot of money because my quality score is gonna be really low because that content is not relevant. Well, even within my own website, if I'm saying gold uh, men's watches and I'm driving traffic to the homepage, maybe there's a more relevant page now that we've learned about content, right? because now we've written content around a page for Goldman's watches. So instead of sending that traffic and that text ad to the homepage, let's send it deeper into the website to a more relevant landing page that talks about Goldman's watches. When I do that, as Google follows that all through, they can give me a higher quality score because of that landing page experience. And therefore I pay less money for my search engine marketing and have better performance. So in conclusion, two birds, one stone. That if, if you didn't get that, I think that was pretty uh, self-explanatory, right? We killed two birds with one stone. What you do to optimize for SEO can also help your SEM. Ultimately, produce the best content content that's relevant, engaging, focused, and organized for your customers, and they will efficiently find you through your SEO, through your ranking, and you will efficiently find them through your SEM, through your high quality score when you're doing your paid search ads. So that's a good way to capture that traffic through organic and through paid search, SEO and SEM, by the content that we have on our website. So I hope that was uh, helpful. I definitely um, would love to answer any questions anybody has. So I'll, I'll be quiet and open it up to any questions. James, I have a question um, that came up when you were talking about being really focused and having one topic on a page and making sure that your page really just talks about that one thing. I, as I'm managing the Chambers website, I often have this feeling like, I'm just creating this proliferation of pages and that the website is sort of getting too big and unwieldy and that it doesn't, I feel, I feel constrained that I don't want to make too many pages. Is that something that I should worry about or not worry about? I, I, I wouldn't worry about having too many pages. Um, I do think we have to be careful to not build pages just to build pages. Again, mm -hmm. it, it needs to be, there needs to be a reason for it. So it's not just building content to, to build it, but um, as long as it's well organized and it's needed content, there's no limit to it. And, and it does seem that Google uh, does reward uh, websites that are not uh, static, you know, that are dynamic, that are growing, that are adding new content. Those can be things that can improve ranking as, as opposed to a website that just sits there. It's like we've reached our, this is it. <laughs> we've built all the content. We've answered every question our, our, our customer, our client may ever ask and, and we're done. But, you know, we, it, we can, it can always expand. I wouldn't be worried about expanding too much. Just how I organize it and focus it, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think maybe I'm thinking of that from more of a user experience per perspective, where if, if, you know, the menu has so many submenus and submenus, I'm worried people will just get lost and never find that. Yep. Yeah, you do have to be, a, a, that's a great point. And I think that's where we can have landing, you know, it doesn't have to be all through menus and submenus. It can be a landing page that has links to the content that is maybe blocked or listed you know, in ways so they're not necessarily in the navigation, but as long as we're driving them to that page and then they can find those places from that page, you know, I think you'll be in good shape. Great, thank you.
Any other questions? I don't have a question, but I want, I have a comment. This is a very difficult subject for me. <laughs> you know, I went to college in, in the old days before computers were, even, were popular even out there. Um, but I want to thank you for making a very difficult subject easy for somebody like me to understand. I didn't grasp everything, but I think I got the main gist of everything to know basically what I don't know and where I need to kind of look into things. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it is very complicated and complex and I understand it. I've been doing this for a long time. And so I'm considered, you know, like, uh, you know, even if somebody has been doing this two or three years, they're like pretty much a, you know, a veteran because it's still a newer uh, science, but I mean, it, it's, uh, um, it is complicated, it is complex. And that's part of why our mission is to help business owners better understand it. You know, we want to empower them through understanding, like it's not magic. It's not, um, it's not something you can't get. I hope this made it easier to, to, to say, you know what, I can, I can start to wrap my head around some of this. It does start to make sense. And then that way you can do something about it, you know? And isn't this a, a very fluid growing topic daily that you really, well, especially somebody like you, and I know with Greg too, you've got to keep up with it. I mean, you've got to constantly keep up with it yourself and grow with this technology that we have available, because I'm assuming that this year is going to be different than what's important next year. I mean, I have seen this whole technology grow so quickly over the years. It just kind of goes, boom. So I imagine, you know, people like us who don't know a whole lot is going to have to depend more and more on people that are taking the time to keep up. Yeah, it does. I always, one of the things I say about digital marketing is it requires vigilance. I mean, it vigilance to me is like a key word for digital marketing because it is, it, I can never really rest on my laurels. Even I, I tried to refresh myself and, and even things that I'm talking about now, I, I think most of it is, is pretty much like the, the current standards. You know, I even was watching one of Google's engineers to prepare for this talk in 2010 about quality score and what ranking factors, you know, how, how this was determined. And that's evolved with taking into account historical data, expected click-through rates, as opposed to just the click-through rate, you know, taking into account the context of the search of the user. So there are so many, it is, you're right. It's a dynamic, dynamic space. It's ever changing and it requires vigilance. I would imagine that you need to also keep looking to the future yourself and keep updated on that too, of what's coming down the road so that you mm -hmm. can be prepared. I mean, it's yep. crazy. It is, <laughs> it is. It's not easy. <laughs> but James, someone you. is asking that you uh, share your email address again. My, my email is, is james at uh, gigstrategic.com. James at gigstrategic.com.